Hello everyone, welcome to the video on redox titrations. As the name indicates, the titrations which include reduction and oxidation are known as redox titrations. In this video, I am going to explain about redox titration types like permagnometry, dichrometry, idometry and idometry and serimetry. This is my YouTube channel wherein you find videos related to pharmacy, medicine and Corona awareness videos. If you like my video, just type in my name G Sahariajesh in YouTube, you will get the channel. Do subscribe and share. Let's get into the topic. Now, before getting into the topic, we need to understand what do you mean by reduction and oxidation. Now, see, reduction and oxidation we need to understand with respect to electrons. If electron is removed from a substrate, it is called as oxidation process. If electron is gained by a substrate, the process is called as reduction. That is what depicted here. See, electron donor, this one will get oxidized, oxidation. Whereas, electron acceptor, this piece is got reduced or it is called as reduction. There are many definitions are there with related to oxygen, hydrogen and electrons. If a substrate adds up oxygen, it is known as oxidation. If you remove oxygen, it is called as reduction. If a substrate gets gets hydrogen, it is called as reduction. If you remove hydrogen, it is called as oxidation. Similarly, if you remove electrons, the process becomes oxidation. If you add electrons, the process becomes reduction. Let's see the comprehensive table. So, this is how it looks. See, electrons, when a substrate loses electron, the process is called as oxidation. When it gains electrons, it is called as reduction. Similarly, with respect to oxygen, when a substrate gains oxygen, it is called as oxidation. When you remove that oxygen, it is called as reduction. With respect to hydrogen, if a substrate loses hydrogen, it is called as oxidation. If it gains hydrogen, it is reduction. Now, same thing, understand this thing. If electron is lost, what happens to the oxidation number? Electron has got negative charge, so oxidation, cha oxidation number increases. If something gains electrons like reduction what happens to the oxidation number it decreases because electron charge is negative one so the oxidation number decreases let me cl clarify this one look at this see a and b are there both of them the oxidation number is zero now let's say a lost electron when it is lost electron the process is oxidation because the negative charge is lost it gets a, gets a positive charge because it lost a negative charge so indirectly it is getting a positive charge Whereas, the other substrate, when it gains electrons, look at this, what has happened? It gains electrons, means it gets a negative charge. So, the substance which lost electrons, it has undergone oxidation. The substance which gained electron, it has undergone reduction. Two more words are there. Reducing agent, oxidizing agent. Now, understand this one. Reducing agent, what is the job of this agent? It has to cause a reduction. What is reduction? By giving electrons. See, A has donated these electrons to B. What has happened to B? B has gained electrons, so that means it got reduced. Because of A, B got reduced, so hence A is known as a reducing agent. Similarly, B, this one is called as an oxidizing agent. What has happened? B has taken up electrons, that means it has removed these electrons from A, so A got oxidized because of B. So, B is called as oxidizing agent. You need to understand this thing carefully. Reducing agent is an agent which causes reduction. Oxidizing agent is an agent which causes oxidation. Simple thing. Now, see, a chemical reaction where both oxidation and reduction takes place simultaneously is known as redox reaction. Reduction and oxidation. So, the titrations which involve reduction and oxidation are known as redox titrations. Now, the substance being oxidized will donate electrons to the substance being reduced. Similarly, a reducing agent will undergo oxidation and an oxidizing agent will undergo reduction. You need to understand this. See, the reducing agent, what has happened to it? It has got oxidized, whereas oxidizing agent, it has got reduced. Now, see, based upon the oxidizing agent, the names are given. If potassium permanganate is used, it is called as permanganometry. If potassium dichromate is used, it is known as dichrometry or chrometry. If iodine is used, it is called as iodometry or iodimetry. If ceric ammonium sulfate is used, it is known as cerimetry. Let us see one by one the basic principles. Now, 
permanganate titration. See, in this titration, potassium permanganate is an oxidizing agent, which is in fact a very powerful oxidizing agent. It is used in presence of dilute sulfuric acid. Now, what happens? Look at the reaction. The potassium permanganate has got violet color. When you see the oxidation state, the manganese has got plus 7 oxidation state. Now, 8, see what has happened. From plus 7, it has converted to plus 2. That means it has gained electrons. That means it got reduced. So, it has oxidized this iron. See, oxidation means what? Increase in oxidation number. So, potassium permanganate is oxidized this iron. Hence, it is known as oxidizing agent. So, this is what is the basic reaction in this permanganate titration with respect to iron. Now, see, these titrations are carried out so that iron and potassium permanganate react stoichiometrically and by the amount of potassium permanganate consumed will tell you the amount of iron. That is what is the purpose of titration says. Now, one more advantage is there with permanganate titrations. You can see this potassium permanganate initially has got violet color. When the titration goes on, it becomes colorless. So, from this butyrate, potassium permanganate is added. And here you have this analyte, oxalic acid or iron kind of things. When the titration is going on, when, when all the permanganate is consumed, it becomes colorless. When you add excess amount of potassium permanganate, it gives this kind of pale color, pale pink color that indicates the end point. See, the solution remains colorless before the end point because Mn plus 2 is colorless. The moment you add excess of KMnO4, it gives a pale pink color. That is what indicates the end point. Now, the advantage with potassium permanganate is it is a kind of self-indicator. See, you are not adding any other indicator to know the end point. Permanganate itself serves as an indicator. So, these kind of things are known as self-indicators. You are not adding anything from outside. Right? See, the potassium permanganate is used to estimate oxalic acid, iron salts, hydrogen peroxide, oxalate and more. And getting into the details of this one, see, again, you don't need all these things, understand these things. So, this is what happened. Here, the manganese oxidation state is plus 7, is converted to plus 2. So, it has taken up electrons, 5 electrons it has taken. So, iron from plus 2, it has moved to plus 3. So, it has, it has donated electrons. So, it has got oxidized iron, the same reaction. So, this is what is the whole reaction is. Now, this is how the titration looks like. Burette has got potassium permanganate. The analyte will be here. Uh, at the end point, it will be colorless. The moment you would access, it becomes a pale pink color. That serves the end point of the titration. Now, next type, see, chrometry or dichrometry, wherein you will be using potassium dichromate. Again, at chromium, the oxidation state from plus 6, it changes to plus 3. What has happened? It has taken up electrons. So, it has oxidized this iron from plus 2 to plus 3. Similar kind of mechanism. Stoichiometrically, they will react and uh, all the chrome uh, iron will get oxidized in presence of this dichromate. So, this is how it is. Now, but here you need to use an external indicator like diphenylamine. Diphenylamine initially it gives a green color which is converted to purple color at the end of titration. So, the end point is indicated by this color change. Now, the next one, iodometry and iodometry. Understand this one. See, iodometry, only the difference is an alphabet here. Now, iodometry is, a, is, is not a direct titration. Now, look at this. What happens is the analyte reacts with iodides in ionic form and it releases iodine. So, in iodometry, iodine is produced, right? So, again, see, analyte stoichiometrically reacts and releases iodine. The released amount of iodine is equivalent to this analyte concentration. So, iodine concentration is found out by using a standard thiosulfate titration. So, iodine is taken here, which is brown in color, and it is titrated with thiosulfate, which gives pale yellow color. At the end, starch is used as an indicator. Now, what is the job of starch? Starch combines with iodine and gives blue color. So, when you are doing titration, when the iodine is titrated with thiosulfate, when all the iodine is consumed up, the blue color disappears. It becomes colorless. That is what indicates the end point of the titration. So, starch is the indicator here. Just understand, iodometry involves release of this iodine. It is not a direct titration. It is a kind of indirect titration method. Whereas, iodimetry is a direct titration with iodine. See, analyte is directly titrated with iodine and it, and it produces iodide. Again, starch is an indicator. 
Again same, when free iodine is there, it combines with starch and gives a blue color. When iodine is consumed by this analyte, then the color disappears. See, end point is when blue color appeared upon addition of starch disappears. So, for both the reactions, uh, indicator is starch. Now, the last one is serimetry. <coughs> It is a uh, it involves ceric sulfate. See, cerium with plus four oxidation state is converted to plus three. Again, this is an oxidizing agent. Now, again, this is also a self indicator one. Initially, it has got yellow color. It converts to colorless when the titration ends. So, it is a powerful oxidizing agent and possesses a bright yellow color. During titration, ceric sulfate undergoes reduction to serous sulfate, which is colorless in nature nature and this indicates the end point of the titration. So, this is about redox titrations. Hope you understand the class. If you like the video, do subscribe and share. Thank you.